welcome to episode 185 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 7th of October. So welcome everybody. I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some crochet, some sewing, some confessions. I've been a little bit naughty. I have a couple of questions from the Ask Me Anything thread in the Ravelry group and some information on my shop update this Friday and I've got some new little gadgets to show you. So first of all I've got some prizes to draw from the Craft 20 a Day thread on Ravelry and also Instagram. So the two prize winners from the Ravelry group are Em's Little Nest which is Emma from New Zealand and Rose Garden Cottage, so congratulations. And then I've got a winner from Instagram, and it's the Light of Dawn X, which is Glenda. So congratulations, everybody. Don't forget to drop me a message, but I will be messaging you in the next few days if you don't get to me first. So let's get on with the knitting, shall we? So I have a couple of projects that Adam's mum's been working on, and I've sort of finished off um, and done the blocking, etc because I've still been really busy working on patterns for the advents and Christmas boxes. So first of all, I have the Lil Dahlia Solo top, and this is a, a, such a cute pattern with that beautiful lace across the top. And this is gonna be a little top for my baby, and this is knitted in the one-year-old size, which is the third size um, that the pattern is available in. But the pattern isn't only available in the t-shirt form, but you can get like an all-in-one with, you put press studs underneath between the legs and also a cardigan version and a long sleeve version as well. So there is quite a bit of detail to the pattern. But I just thought that this short sleeve version would be really nice to wear with a long sleeve t-shirt underneath. There was a picture in the pattern of a little boy wearing one with a little long sleeve t-shirt underneath which looks absolutely gorgeous. So I'll pop the picture up there so you can see what it looks like. But this gorgeous yarn was gifted to me by lovely Claire from Mr and Mrs Rabbit Yarns and it is a merino and silk blend that she dyed especially for me as a present for my little baby to knit something up in and it is absolutely gorgeously soft. And there's some beautiful colours there, some greys, different shades of blue and green. And you just, oh, it's absolutely beautiful texture to it. So that'll be something really lovely for the baby to wear. If you look at the back of the top, it's got a gap here so that you've got lots of room to get it over the baby's head because obviously the baby's heads are quite big when they're little. Um, but it's blocked out beautifully. But look at that lace, absolutely gorgeous. So there we go, that's the first object I've got to show you. And this actually took 60 grams of yarn, so I've given the yarn back to Liz to knit the smaller size because she's got 40 grams left um, to see if I, she could get a 0 to 3 months out of the same ball of yarn. And then I can have a tiny one as well to go with it, but isn't that lovely? So Liz noticed that when she was knitting it that it is only charted this lace pattern so if you're not into reading charts probably not the best pattern for you but it actually made Liz get into chart reading more which is brilliant but isn't it lovely that's really cute so this is a one year so she's going to knit me a smaller size one as well. So that's the first thing I've got to show you and this is also knitted another baby garment but this isn't blocked just yet so this is the antler cardigan by tin can knit so this is actually knitted in the same yarn as my antler cardigan so I thought we'd win match <laughs> I haven't put the buttons on yet so Liz doesn't like putting button bands on so I did the button bands this week but I didn't have a chance to block it yet. But I'm really pleased with how that's come out. It is a very thick cardigan, and again, this one is a, a one to two year old. So it is a little bit on the bigger side rather than knitting all small baby things. It was a very quick knit because it is an Aran weight yarn, and I do have some left, so maybe some little accessories to go with it as well. <laughs> I will put buttons on the cardigan and show it you next week when it's been blocked properly and you'll be able to see those cables a little bit better I think when I've blocked it but there we go 
So that's the second thing that I've got to show you. And I have actually been doing quite a lot of crochet this week instead of doing knitting. Well, apart from the pattern stuff, of course, I'm hoping actually to show you at the end of October these new patterns that I'm going to be releasing. So I'll, re I'll be releasing the sock pattern and also the blanket pattern that are to go with the advents and the sock sets. Um, that people have already purchased that will be available for everyone else to purchase on the 1st of December But those of you who purchased a kit will be receiving an email with the pattern um, In mid-November so just to let you know So I've been doing lots of crochet besides that sort of pattern design stuff and I have done another whole L shape of squares on my Battenberg blanket and isn't it cute really really lovely I have so much fun working on this and I think that the way I'm doing it, doing like an L shape each time of filling in the colours um, and the undyed yarns of sort of one row and working down two sides as I go, I think that's sort of keeping me going working on this rather than trying to just do big sections at a time just you know doing two sides and then leaving it for a, a few days and then coming back to it but um I just love this pattern so this is a pattern by Sandra Paul from the Cherry Heart podcast and Sandra has got really good directions on how to do the squares on her website as well as a tutorial on how to join the squares as well so I will leave a link to that in the description bar down below um, as I always do with all the videos I have had a couple of people asking me to do a tutorial on it but there is already tutorials on how to make this blanket that, that Sandra's made a brilliant job of um, and I don't tend to do tutorials on things that aren't my pattern anyway, even if it is a free pattern. But I'm really pleased with how this is coming along. And I have actually got a question from the Ask Me Anything section about this blanket, so I might as well address it now. Uh, it was Erin who was asking me, how do I arrange the colour on my Battenberg blanket? Because she remembers that when I was doing my Cozy Memories blanket, I was alternating sort of dark and light colours to make it like a checkerboard effect. Well, obviously on this one, I'm using the undyed yarn in between. But what I'm trying to do is just, I, I pick up a few colours out of my basket of little minis and I'll crochet up a few of the squares and then I lay them out around the blanket so that the colours are sort of spread out so that they're not too close together of the same colour. Well, hopefully not anyway. <laughs> I'm trying not to. And just seeing if I like those colours next to each other before I pop them into the blanket. Um, and that's all I do really. Just pick pick a few, like I'm doing a good range of the colours that I'm choosing for the blanket. Do sort of 12 or 15 squares and then pick the ones that I like next to the row that I've already done across here. And then start doing the undyed ones. Um, and it's just coming out really nicely. So I try and... When I'm choosing the colours to go in this blanket, I just, I think, well, I'm, I'm looking for some sort of paler colours and some pops of brighter colour to go in this particular one because it's going to be for the baby. And I'm just sort of picking those colours as I go, as I'm making the squares and then placing them carefully so that hopefully I won't get too much of the same colour in one spot, if that makes sense. So there we go, that's a mixture of the, one of the Ask Me Anything questions in my crochet section. And I've got uh, some sewing to show you next. Now, so I haven't got any dressmaking to show you this week, but I thought I would make a new cover for my Moses basket. So this had a white um, poly cotton cover around the outside of it before. Um, and I thought, well, I just don't, I didn't like the the quality of the material that I had been used to make the cover and also it was a little bit baggy around the the sort of ends here there was a lot of excess fabric so what I did is I just looked at the cover that was already on it and it's made with several panels so you've got one panel that goes from the edge of the handle all the way round to this handle and the same for that side and then you've got a, pan a small panel for the outside of the handle and a small panel for the inside of the handle and the same for that side and then you've obviously got the base piece as well 
so I took measurements for those and I made sure that when I was measuring this distance round here that it was quite a nice tight measurement rather than just measuring the piece of fabric that was already used as a cover on it so it made it nice and tight round the outside and I cut those rectangles out and same goes for these side panels here I joined them in a loop and just made sure they'd fit and for the base panel this this is a cover for the mattress that I'd showed you the end, last week, I think, or the week before, where I'd made a waterproof mattress cover, and this is just like a sheet to go over that. I'd used that pattern that I'd made from the mattress to to make the base piece as well, rather than using a piece of fabric the same as the lining that was in there before, because it was really loose and it was getting on my nerves. So I just used the pattern piece that I'd made for the mattress itself and joined that all in. Um, and the original cover for the Moses basket also had ties on the side and I was a little bit worried, maybe excessively, <laughs> that they might get pulled or choked on or whatever. So I just decided to put some tabs on here just to hold it around where the handles are and pop a couple of press studs on so that it's nice and secure. But I love this fabric. So this is a green batik that I had in my stash absolutely ages ago and it was just enough to make the cover for the basket. Um, I had a metre and a half of a sort of standard width of fabric, I think it's like 112 centimetres and it was enough to make the cover and the mattress cover as well but there wasn't quite enough um, to do the base panel but because the mattress is covering it anyway no one's gonna see. <laughs> so if you want to make a cover for your Moses basket, I suggest having a meter and a half of fabric to actually cover the basket. And then you need, I think probably about a meter to make a couple of sheets as well. And again, these, let me take the mattress out. So this is the same as I did the mattress protector for. It's got like um, a pillowcase opening at the back so it goes all the way around and I've got the mattress protector under there that I showed you last week which I made from PUL but I'm really pleased with how that's come out I think it's nice and bright and it goes with the baby room theme as well which I'll have to show you at some point so there we go that's this week's sewing and it's um, Moses basket cover I did find um, a couple of videos where people showed how they did step-by-step -step did the cover for a Moses basket and also the mattress cover as well so I will leave links to those in the description bar down below so now it's my confession okay I really don't need any more fabric but I saw this and I just had to have it I haven't washed these yet because they literally came a day or so ago this is a sweatshirt in fabric from Goof Lugani and it's a relatively lightweight sweatshirt fabric, which I think is good, but it's lovely and soft on the other side. So this is a cotton and polyester sweatshirt in fabric, and it's got little bits of sparkle as well on the little hearts, which I think is really lovely. And I saw this and I thought, oh, I need a billy jumper, the Tilly and the Buttons billy jumper with big poofy sleeves. <laughs> so hopefully this will become a billy jumper in the next few weeks we shall see i might have to concentrate on some of the baby things though and then because i was purchasing that i thought well i'll, I'll just have a look at some of the other fabrics <laughs> and i think this might be the same designer because it does have some sparkle in it as well but this is also from Guthragani and this is a pink cotton jersey so this is much thinner for a t-shirt and it's got hearts on as well but there's the sparkly bits I'm not quite sure whether that is picked up on the camera but I thought that that would make a nice t-shirt as well it is quite a bright pink a little bit brighter than it looked like in the listing but I still absolutely love it so and that's really soft as well really nice quality and then I thought well I've got to buy something for the baby with these gorgeous jersey fabrics that they've got listed and I saw this bare print so I had to have some of that. I'm not quite sure exactly what pattern I'm going to use 
to make this up but it'll be some type of little top or all in one or something like that but it's just gorgeous I love the little bears on the mauled grey background so I've got half a meter of that I think that'll be plenty for a little baby and then I had to have this it's floral <laughs> I was sort of thinking oh well I'm not allowed to buy fabric unless I know what I'm going to do with it and I thought actually that this would make a really nice shirt it is a cotton poplin but a lightweight cotton poplin um, but I thought that that would be nice to make a nice crisp shirt out of perhaps ones that's slightly more fitted I do have the sew over it one of the collections has got a shirt on I can't think what the collection is called I think it might be the work to weekend collection I get confused with the collections but I do have a sew over it shirt pattern that I could make out of this but I also could make the Carly shirt as well um, by Closet Core so I don't know but isn't that pretty it's got some really nice floral designs on it with some little spots on the background and I just love the coral with the navy and the grey I'm showing you upside down let's get it the right way <laughs> Isn't that lovely? So I've got a couple of metres or two and a half metres of that to make a shirt as well. So that was a bit naughty. I have actually got some more fabric that's come in the post this morning, but I will save that till next week because four pieces in one week is quite a lot to show. <laughs> but I will show you that in next week's confession section. So I have one question left from the Ask Me Anything thread and that was from Louise and she was asking have I got any tips for ironing cotton fabric once it's been washed because she's had some issues with creasing and the iron not bringing those creases out when she's washed it. So I'd say that when you hang it up just make sure that it, it is not be increased by where it's being hung if that makes sense so make sure it's completely straight and flat because I find that if you have a little crumple it will sort of stay in it if you leave it to dry in that state I would actually sometimes if you leave it till it's not quite dry dry <laughs> that makes sense so it's it's almost dry but it's very very slightly damp if you give it a press then I find that you can get the creases out nicely make sure you've got a nice steam iron and another thing you can use is ironing spray if you give it a bit of a spray um, and give it an iron that sometimes helps I've used a, a manufacturer called flatter before and I think that's quite good um, but some of the just general like Lenore or different brands in the supermarket might do a, an ironing spray as well so last of all I have my shop update but I do have some exciting new gadgets going in the shop so for ages I've gone on about these clover buttonhole cutters which I have used for ages and ages and I realised that my supplier of clover stuff actually sells them so I'm going to have those in my shop these are the 12 millimeter buttonhole cutters and you basically have this edge here put it into your buttonhole and it cuts into the buttonhole just make sure that you've got a cutting mat underneath it so that you don't make a hole in the table um, but I do find that really useful it's just a little bit easier than using a seam ripper sometimes I'm talking about seam rippers I've got these really nice good quality clover seam rippers that have got a nice big handle on I do like a seam ripper with a nice big handle on just because it's easier to use and these clover ones are nice and sharp as well there's nothing worse than using a seam ripper that's really blunt if you go for very inexpensive seam rippers I find that they're then really not quite as good as getting a really nice good quality one so I'd I've got I've got those coming in in the shop on Friday I noticed actually that they do different sizes of these stitch holders so I've stocked these medium sized stitch holders for a while but they also have large and small ones so they're for different size needles so the the small size goes from a 2.75 millimeter to a 4.5 millimeter needle and the medium ones which I've stocked for ages are a 3.75 millimeter needle to an 8 millimeter needle and then the large are 3.75 to 8 millimeter but they're also longer as well so if you want a longer stitch holder and they come in packs of two they're really handy 
so I really like to keep these handy next to the sofa just because you can quickly pop that off and pop your stitches onto the needle and I also use them for keeping the little Battenberg squares together as well just as a handy little tool um, but the different sizes I do tend to use these um, most of the time even though it says from 3.75 millimeters but obviously the the blue ones are a narrower needle so that if you have got really tight stitches it's not going to stretch them out so I've got the three sizes in the shop as from Friday so I also saw they've got these clover little tubes to put your needles in and then it comes with a set of three darning needles so that you can use them to sew your ends in when you're knitting and this has got a, a handy little screw top and you could also actually because there's a little hole in the lid you could attach that to a key ring or something but um, I just thought it was handy to have a little tube with them in and last but not least I'll be stocking these clover cable needles that I've got a use shape I thought they're quite handy to have a different option cable needle as well so I also sell higher higher version but these u-shaped ones can be handy as well so that's what's going in the shop they will be in the shop this friday at 7 p.m gmt and i will send an email out to everybody just reminding them that i'm going to do a, a shop update if you've registered onto my mailing list as well so you can find on my website there's a little registration to be on my mailing list at the bottom of the page so I just wanted to say that I'm shipping out this week all the advents and the Christmas boxes, the Starlight Wishes boxes that I put on for sale in August. They'll be shipped out this week just to allow plenty of time to the, for them to get over to their destinations, um, especially in the US or Australia, etc. And that's, I haven't got any more advents left because I've had a couple of people asking me if I have. But I do know that Hayley from Ducky Darlings does have a few advents left um, on her website. So if you are looking for an advent, pop over to her website and have a look there. I had Hayley's advent last year and it was really lovely. I think this year's theme's winter comfort, so that sounds really lovely. So do pop over to Hayley's website, Ducky Darlings, and I'll leave a link to it in the description bar down below. So I think that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you in the next episode. Bye!